Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Venetia and this is the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast and today is a special episode all about my knitting goals or intentions for this year. So I know it's late February slash March and it's a bit late for um, New Year's resolutions but I just thought better late than never and the point of this video is to try and set myself some goals and I guess even challenges if you can call it that to try and meet them over the next 12 months. Some of them are going to be quite specific, some of them I even have the yarn for already, others are more like overarching intentions and I think there's quite a good variety in there so I think maybe it could resonate with some of you or you might even share some of those goals with me. I'm super excited to talk about all of this because I love to talk about my project planning and my color choices and I know some of you have said in the comments that you like to hear me talk about my plans so if this is your kind of video then I'm sure you're going to enjoy this one. If you're a returning viewer then thank you so much for clicking on this video and continue to watch me. It means the world to me. I love reading your comments. It's my favorite part of doing this uh, little YouTube channel. And if you're a new viewer, then welcome. I am Venetia. Like I said, I'm from Belgium and I live in Scotland near Edinburgh with my partner. And I love knitting. I love podcasting now. I really do. And usually I do a knitting podcast. I've got four episodes on the channel right now. And lots of plans to continue. So if you're into that, then please subscribe. As always, you can find all of the information in the description box. I keep it very, very detailed. And anything that I mention here, like patterns or books or people, I will make sure to put them in the description so you can click on that. And also, if you want to follow me on Ravelry, that's where I keep all of my project notes. And then if you want to follow me on Instagram, at the Woolly Worker for both of them, that's where I share sometimes, uh, I guess, artsy photos of my knits, or try to anyway, and also some stories where you can see a bit of my life and behind the scenes, and sometimes I put polls on there because I can't decide anything, so you guys have helped me pick thumbnails before, which is so appreciated. But yeah, we've got a lot to talk through. I hope this video isn't going to be too, too long, but if it is, just pause it and come back to it when you want. I hope you've got some knitting with you or a drink and that you're comfortable. As always, if you want to let me know in the comments what you're working on, that way I can go look it up, get inspired and add it to my own queue. And other people might also be inspired by the projects that you're working on while you're watching this. So let's get started. Ooh, just before we start, actually, I forgot to record this, but I'm wearing the Marseille sweater by Petite Knit. And this is in Double Sunday by Saint Nesgarn in the color Dusty Rouge and Almond for the stripes. This is a drop shoulder uh, oversized crew neck jumper. It's got stripes, as you can see, obviously. It's very nice. It's quite like long, but not overly long. Sorry about the sun. Um, it's really comfortable. It's merino wool, which is just like next to skin soft. People have complained about it pilling after some wears, and to be fair, I haven't been wearing that too, too much, but I've not seen any pilling, so I don't know what I'm doing right, but I hope I keep doing it. It's got very long ribbing on the sleeves and on the body, a really nice, like, chunky neck with a pearl row in the middle, and just a very lovely, like, neck increase detail here on the side, and a continuous shoulder that's made with short rows. I don't know if you can see this, but yeah, it's a lovely jumper. She originally made it in the colors like navy, where it was like almond and then some navy blue for the stripes. But I didn't like that. I got inspired by other people who chose a different main color. So yeah, totally recommend this pattern. It was quite a feat. It was quite long with lots of instructions, but it was very interesting because it just kept on changing. So you just had to reach the next section to see what was happening next. And overall, it wasn't too long a knit. I enjoyed every second of it. So my first goal for this year is that I want to knit a Murray Wallen pattern. So I've talked about this before in my 10 cardigans I want to make video. I talked about the Yale cardigan by Murray Wallen from her Shetland collection. So I've got the book right here. It's this beautiful book. And it's a collection of eight garments and four accessories. And funnily enough, I, I genuinely love 
all of them and might do all of them. So initially I wanted to do the yellow cardigan, which is a beautiful kimono style thing here that I, I'll put on screen. But I thought that this is going to be very challenging for a first Mary Wallen project and also less wearable maybe because it's fancier and I really don't know what to style it with. It feels more like a work of art that you'd knit for e exposing it, you know, and showing, showing it off, but not necessarily wear to like lunch. Uh, another pattern from this book that I thought would be more wearable and that I also love the look of is the Brissa sweater. Uh, and that one, I probably would jump straight into it, but it's worked uh, bottom up, which I've not done before, especially for color work. So I'm kind of, I, I'm, I'm a bit careful about this. And also because I guess most of the projects it's done on fingering weight yarn using Shetland, like Jimison Shetland Spinrift wool. And I don't want to just like work bottom up and do the entire body for ages before even reaching the color work. I want to go straight into color work. And also I'm not like that big a fan of that color that the main body is made of. It's called Bramble by Jameson like Shetland Spindrift. And I've had a look at other people's projects on Ravelry and they've substituted some colors. Usually what people do is they don't just substitute one color because that might throw off balance the rest of the jumper, especially when there's so many colors involved. So I've seen some people replace almost all of the colors and they've come up with some beautiful color combinations, which I'm not brave enough to change Mary Wallen on my own, so definitely taking inspiration from those people. But I'm not ready yet, so anyway, to cut a long story short, instead of doing those two patterns from the Shetland collection, I'm going to do another one from the Shetland collection called the Bura Cowl. And I'll show you here. That's the cowl right there. And it uses, I think, 11 colors. And it's just a circular like infinity style cowl that you'd knit in the round and graft the ends at the end. And yeah, I've decided to do this actually as part of a knit along hosted by um, Young Folk Knits called the Color Me Happy Cal. Uh, and that's running until spring, I think, or middle of spring. And the point of that is to make a neck accessory. So that's why I chose this cowl. And also there's a Mary Wallen Burra cowl Knit Along that's running the whole year, hosted by PJ Knits, and I'll also link her and um, the other one down below. Sorry, I really should have been more prepared, but yeah, the, I'm gonna double dip and do this cowl as part of those two knit alongs, which it was also one of my goals this year was to do a knit along, so I guess uh, that's mission accomplished with my lento that I'm doing right now, which I've, I'm talking about in the podcast a lot, so you can go watch that. But I'm doing two cows this year, which is great, and probably more to come. I get very um, roped into things when uh, masses do them. I'm very influenceable that way. But anyway, so I am doing this as a knit along. I've got the colors. I already had two in stash, and then I was trying to buy the other nine in a store. And it's actually really, really hard to find a store that stocks, like, nine or 11 specific shades. There's always going to be one that's out of stock. And I just couldn't do it. There was no online shop that had all of them. But then came to the rescue, Be Inspired Fibers, my local yarn shop in Edinburgh. They had almost all of the shades I needed. And then for the two of them that they didn't have, I substituted very carefully. So one of them was a yellow shade that I substituted for another almost like for like yellow shade. And there's only like three rows in the pattern that use it. So I feel like it's fine. And then the other one is a green that I've substituted. So I'm going to show you the colors here. <clears throat> oh, yay! I've got this little pyramid. I've got another one, but I've caked it up into this. So um, it doesn't really fit on the pyramid. Dare I? Oh, no, I don't. That's my little pyramid of Shetland Spindrift. I can't wait to cast this on. I was practicing color work for a while and I think I'm ready. So I'll get into that. So yeah, my goal for this year is just to, to knit this burra cowl and to learn from that and then to take on this learning to then maybe try to brace a sweater or the yellow cardigan in future years, not this year. The second goal this year is to knit my very dear boyfriend a jumper. So I've knit him some mittens and a pair of socks very recently, the socks for Valentine's Day, and he loved them and he wears them every day and he's so knit worthy and it made me very, very happy. So I think he's ready. He's ready to get a cardigan. Uh, a sweater. So we've talked a lot 
together about that because I don't want it to be a surprise. I want to make sure that the yarn color and fit and pattern are all to his liking because there's no point otherwise. And at first, I've spoken about this before as well in 10 sweaters I want to make. I We had settled on um, Malabrigo Rios for the single malt sweater by Maxim Sir because he likes the feel of that wool, but I was getting so worried about it being super wash and I've heard a lot of people comment and say that they had problems or they knew of problems with that pattern for fit and I don't want to take that risk and to also mix a super wash in that mix, you know, so I decided to go for a safer wool and I've been working with Cascade yarn recently to make my loom sweater and he liked the feel of that. It's 100% wool, non-superwash, but it's really soft and uh, nice and round. I think it'll be a good texture for the pattern. I've actually swatched with the Malabrigo and this is what we have. So it's a beautiful texture. I think it'll be very fun. I'll swatch again with the Cascade to see how that is. But yeah, and the color he went for is called I think chocolate heather or dark chocolate heather. Yeah, chocolate heather. And it's nice. It's like a nice heathered non-flat color that I think he's going to suit a lot and hopefully highlight that texture. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to doing that. I think I'm just uh, basically waiting on clearing off the needles and I'm, I'm going to order the yarn and maybe start going. I'll make sure to document that process because I've never made a sweater for another uh, person actually. So that'll be exciting. The gauge might be off actually, looking at uh, other people who have used Cascade. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go down a couple needle sizes, especially because I'm a loose knitter, I think. So go down a few needle sizes with the Cascade and then calculate what size of the pattern I should do to give me the, the ease I want. So I'll do all that math when it comes to it and I'll make sure again to talk about like my process to do that if you're interested. And maybe that way you can too substitute yarn more easily. The third goal I have this year is that I want to practice, I want to learn a new skill. And I was hesitating between intarsia or sticking, and I think I'm going to try sticking. So initially, I guess, again, the yellow card again, I thought it would be a good opportunity to learn how to stick, but I don't think I am psychologically, mentally ready to stick a pattern like that after an a countless amount of hours that I would have spent working on that. So I don't think I want the yellow card again to be my first sticking project. Uh, so I was looking around. I think I was maybe going to do the Maya card again with Istex, which is also a very toothy, catchy yarn. But I still don't know if I want to buy Istex. I think it's just like the hype. I really want to get it, but I think I won't tolerate it because my skin is sensitive. So I probably won't by Istex for a while, unless I try it for just like mittens or something, or fingerless mitts. But I found this pattern by Isolde Teague called Brunsfield, and Brunsfield is actually a lovely little place in Edinburgh that me and my partner actually used to live in, and it's near this beautiful park called the Meadows in Edinburgh. If you've been, you know, you know what it's like. And also that's uh, around the same area that Be Inspired Fibers, the yarn shop, is located. So I love Brunsfield, I need to do this pattern, it's Fair Isle, it's a nice little vest, and you stick, I think, the armholes and the neck hole, possibly, so that, that way you make it in the round. Yeah, it's actually also made bottom-up, so I guess that'll be a good way of learning bottom-up color work. Not that it matters too much, it's just about fit. It might be harder to gauge when to do the armholes, but it's okay. And it's all over color work, but it's a vest, so there'll be no sleeves. And also the stick is going to be smaller, just like the armhole. So I think it'll be a great color work pattern, a great sticking pattern. I've heard amazing things about Isolde's patterns in terms of detail and instructions and, and support. And I really wanted to support this Edinburgh-based pattern designer as well. So yeah, looking forward to doing this Brunsfield vest. It's made with my favorite wool as well, like the Shetland Jimison uh, Spindrift. Maybe... So this is Shetland Spindrift. They also have a different wool that's like two-ply jumper weight, but it behaves as a four-ply. And they also have a collection that's like just neutral, so it's like undyed wool, which I think would look gorgeous for this kind of vest because I don't want it to be too colorful. I think muted browns and grays would be lovely as it is. And I've seen again on Ravelry some people who have very generously like detailed all their color choices so that other people can copy that. So definitely going to take inspiration from other people because I think the original 
is a bit too green khaki for my liking. I'd rather it was less... I think it's a bit too warm. I think I'd rather it was a colder palette. But yeah, so I'll be excited, I'll be excited to do that seek and I, I probably will video it just for um, posterity. Okay, so my fourth goal is to knit a couple of cardigans because last year I only did one and I liked it, but then I actually never even ended up sewing the buttons on. I just sewed them on this year in 2023. So in 2023, I want to make at least two cardigans. I want to sew the buttons right away and I want to wear them because that's the point. I actually wear cardigans normally more often than I do sweaters. And ever since becoming a knitter, I've become more reticent to buy cardigans because I know that I can make them. So yeah, I want to make the cardigans. I've already swatched for one. I want to make the field day cardigan by Ozetta using West Yorkshire Spinner The Croft in the colorway Kova. And I want to make the April cardigan by Petite Net using uh, Drops Flora in beige and then Filcolana Tilia in chai. And I've talked more at length in the cardigans I want to make video. So if you want more details of that thought process, then you're welcome to go check that out. I don't want to repeat too much in case you've watched those videos already. Um, but actually, I think maybe the one that I really would prefer making would be cardigan number eight by My Favorite Things Knitwear. That one uses tweed, and then also some people have um, held it with alpaca one. And I think that's a really good alternative to using mohair, is to use a, a thin strand of lace alpaca. Um, the tweed colors are gorgeous. Some people have made it in that sand colorway. Other people have made it in gray. There's a colorway that's called confetti, I think, which has multicolored flecks of tweed that I'm less keen on. But when I see other people posting finished projects, it makes me a bit jealous and actually that is really fun but anyway the big overall vibe of this cardigan is that it's very it, it just looks so cozy like the thing that you just throw on on like literally whatever clothes you're wearing and it keeps you warm like a big hug and it's like a grandpa cardigan vibe and something that looks old almost but like cherished so i think maybe i'll make that towards the end of the year because now it's going to get too warm to work on and wear a big iron weight cardigan but the april cardigan is going to be a really nice springtime cardigan so that one i can see myself do very soon okay my goal number five is to felt something and that's also kind of to learn a new technique so it just looks like the funnest thing to do i think what i was initially wanting to do was to knit some slippers and then felt them and that way it'd be very nice and like a very strong fabric that wouldn't get holes because it was just so dense and I think there's a pattern in 52 weeks of socks that is supposed to be felted, but I'm not sure. And I've seen other people do that with mittens. And again, that would be really good to not let any wind go through those mitts. And Sennes Garn has this wool called Fritted Garn, which is meant to be feltable, I guess. Obviously, basically all wools are feltable, but that one is like made for it. I'm not quite sure of like the science behind it, but I'll just trust what Instagram is saying. And um, My Favorite Things Knitwear has released this pattern quite recently-ish, maybe last year at the end. It's called Beret Number 3. And the thing is, I don't even know if I'm a beret person, but I definitely feel like it would be a very fun, quick project because it's so small. It doesn't require too much yarn either. I think just like three balls of it would uh, be good. Um, I saw a version that wasn't very light grey, which I like, but I think maybe like a navy beret would go well with me. I think I prefer dark headwear to go with my blonde hair. I think if it was too light, it would just wash me out. Like I like the contrast in headwear with different like head col head colors, hair colors. So I don't know about the color yet. And again, I think I don't know if I want to do this now or if I want to do it at the end of the year in preparation for like winter and Christmas. I think now it's being almost March. It might be too late. But I think berry number three is a clear contender or winner. And then the last pattern that I might do is a petite knit stocking where she used that same yarn, fritted scarn, made a big sock and then felted it and then it shrinks. And yeah, could put some candies in that. Maybe that could be a cute Christmas gift for my boyfriend uh, later in the year. So. That just seems like a cool thing that I could say I've felted something on purpose. Same for seeking, where you're cutting something on purpose. It just seems really fun to be doing things that normally you're trying so hard to avoid doing, 
but doing a, a pattern or a project that calls for that thing to happen. Okay, goal number six. That one is a big one. I hope I don't go on for too long about it, but I've agonized over it so much already, and it's probably the reason why I haven't done it yet. So basically what I want is to knit a black sweater. I want it to be a staple, I want it to be wearable, in a good wool that I, I can tolerate, because I already have the Louvre sweater, which was made in this very dark grey colour, and I was wearing that in uh, one of my previous videos. I think the 10 cardigans I want to make. And it's in Pyrgant from Sanders Garn, which is quite itchy, especially on the high funnel neck. So this time, if I make a black sweater, I would want it to not have a funnel neck as well, so that it wouldn't resemble that sweater too much. And I would want it to be just like really soft. And I was just... I also have this thing, I don't know if anyone else has that, but I basically don't want to buy the same yarn color twice in projects, because I feel like over the course of my lifetime, in an ideal world, I would try all the yarns and all the colors. But I know that knitting time is limited, and I am not going to be able to knit that much over the course of my life. So if I made a whole sweater using this Dusty Rouge, for example, I don't want to buy the same shade of Dusty Rouge in another sweater, because I already have it and I already know what it's like. I'd rather try a different shade of Rouge or you know, a different thickness of yarn even. I just never want to buy the same shades twice because I want to discover more things. So long story short, I already have some Phil Colana Peruvian Highland wool in black and I don't want to... and it's for a striped sweater. And I don't want to buy again that Phil Colana wool to make a black sweater because it would feel like a waste. Uh, so... The compromise I've come to is that I think what I'll do is I'll buy Filcolana Peruvian Highland wool in the color char charcoal, which is again this very dark grey, and then I'll pair that with a strand of Filcolana Alva in black and hold them together. And I think this could get me gauged to make the Dartmoor sweater by Kadri. My only worry with that is that you wouldn't be able to see the nice um, shoulder eye cord detail. But that's fine, because my point is that I want this big drop shoulder, crew neck, comfy black jumper. So I think that would be a good way of doing that. The other alternative would be to hold Filcolana Peruvian Highland wool with some brushed alpaca from Drops in black, and that would give me a very fuzzy jumper. And I do really like the feel of the brushed alpaca. But I think I want to try that Peruvian Helen wool and Alva combination instead of having something too fuzzy. I think the Alva will just give the tiniest bit of halo, but like very, not, not so much. And also I won't lose as much stitch definition. So I think I want to try that. And because I'm going to be using two different shades, I think that it'll be a nice, interesting, like deep color. But then the problem with doing that is that this still won't be a pure black jumper. So the other option will be to make a jumper using only black, and that could be sweater number 13 by My Favorite Things Knitwear, and I could use Cascade 220, they have a black colorway, so I could use that. They also have a colorway that's just like a shade under black, I can't remember what it's called, but I'll put it in the comments, uh, in the description. And yeah, I, I feel like it's hard to pick what yarn to do something in black, because technically all blacks will resemble each other. Although apparently I've heard that it's really hard to dye yarn a really true pure black. So like, not all blacks are equal, they, they won't all look the same. And I guess it's something that would be quite helpful actually to go in a yarn store and check out the yarns in person to see if something is like a really true black, or does it look a bit grey, or cool toned, or warm toned. I know that I want to do something in at least a DK slash higher, not something that's smaller, although having a fingering way black sweater would be ideal, but I don't think I'm going to do that this year. I think I'm going to make other fingering weight sweaters and they're going to be a bit more colorful, so not right now. But I think this year definitely want to make either the Dartmoor sweater or the sweater number 13 in, in those yarns that I've mentioned. 
but I'm really open to suggestions. If you've seen any nice black sweaters out there, if you have either a pattern idea or a yarn idea, a good black yarn, please let me know. Something else that would be very tempting, but not this year, is going to be a black cabled sweater. Like maybe sweater number 20. I think that's the, the v-neck with all the cables from my favorite things knitwear. Or like a cabled vest for maybe a low stake, low effort one. Just to see if it's worth it, because I know cables disappear when you do them in dark colors. But it could be that very subtle, you know, like when you turn and you see the highlights on the cables that then show that you have cables. Anyway, other contenders for yarns for that were Drops Puna, which is alpaca, and it looks very nice and soft and fuzzy. So I don't know exactly what pattern I would do that with, but it's a strong contender because they have a black colorway. Although it does look a bit heathered because of the fiber content, so it's not like a pure true black. But that's okay. And then another yarn that I was thinking was King Cole Baby Alpaca, which is also alpaca, as the name indicates, and that one seems to be a truer black. So yeah, that was goal number six, make a black sweater. And like I said, I want it to be a crew neck, and it'll be just, it'll just be very, very comfy. So goal number seven is I want to knit a dress. Now I know that one, I'm, I'm not sure if I'll be able to meet it this year, because I know it'll take a while. I think I would want to make it towards like again, the end of the year for autumn slash winter. I have two different ideas for that. I'll either use a sweater pattern, for example, from Petite Net, like the Stockholm sweater or the chestnut sweater, and then make it longer to make that into a dress. I think Alexandra from Alexandra's Garn has made a Sunday sweater and she turned that into a dress. And that looks just great. I think sweater dresses look very nice and elegant. I don't know if I want to make mine with mohair because first of all, pricey. And then second of all, I don't like I don't want to have a big high turtleneck with mohair. I don't want mohair on my sleeves or like on my like what if I'm wearing tights with it and I can feel the mohair through my tights? I don't think I would like that. So I'll just make it in a single strand probably. And I again wouldn't make it fingering weight because I want to keep my will to live so I will probably make it a DK way or or worsted and yeah so that kind of sweater and just make it longer so I've just been keeping an eye out for when I see people do those modifications and then like favoriting it on Ravelry or on Instagram for future reference and the second idea would be to make a dress just a dress pattern and the dresses that I just keep going back to are the Augustine's dresses she has this thing where she releases a dress every year, I believe, around Christmas time and before. And the point is that you make that dress for like Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. And I think it looks so, so, so cute. I think they look really big and bulky. So I want to make sure that I use a yarn that's not too heavy. Because that's a problem I've heard with people making dresses is that it can feel like you're carrying a lot of weight. Like imagine carrying a kilo on your body. And the one I wanted to make was the number 27, which looks so, so cute. I probably would wear that with like a long sleeve, like just normal plain top, I think. Or maybe like nothing. I don't know if the sleeves would look good with that. I love it. The yarn for this is Camaro's Snuff Snug as the main strand and then either Minestral or Midnight Soul. And those are good because they're actually alter where it doesn't, it's not, it's supposed to not be as itchy. And then the Camaro's Snuff Snug is supposed to be a blown yarn, which is very light. I guess you could also replace it with Send This Garn Cos, for example, or Drops Air, which is very affordable. But I think I've been wanting to try Snuff Snug for, for ages, so I think I'd go for Snuff Snug, to be honest. And color-wise, I guess there's not that many projects, either on Ravelry or Instagram, so I'll just keep an eye out, again, for inspiration. I think light colors are definitely pretty. I'm not sure I'm a fan of like that powder pink slash pastel tones. I think maybe I would do it in like beige or camel or brown, I think. Not gray. I think I'd like it to be warmer. But I'd be really excited for that. Her patterns are so gorgeous. And again, the problem I have with a lot of them is that they look amazing, but if I just ask myself, what would I wear that with? I cannot find any answer whatsoever. And as beautiful as they look and as fun as they seem to be to knit up, I don't want to make something just to stare at it. So that dress honestly seems like one of the most wearable pieces that she has. 
uh, compared to some of the other like blouses that are extremely frilly and like poofy and, and everything. So I don't think I'm gonna make one of her tops, but I'll make that dress, hopefully. I think it'd be really, really exciting. And I think I'd, I'd feel like a, a princess, a Disney princess in that dress. So goal number eight was to do a test knit. And I've actually met that goal like in a couple first few weeks of January. So after launching the channel, and starting to post my photos on Instagram, I actually got accepted in a testnet, my first one, which is the Cabled Vest by Harris Makes. And I'll pop a picture of my work in progress here, and I'll pop a picture as well of what the pattern is supposed to look like. So I'll share Iris's uh, photo. And this is gonna come out later in the year, I think in July, as far as I know. So it will take a while still, but it's been such a fun knit. I've enjoyed making cables so, so much that it's motivated me to do more things with cables, maybe hopefully a jumper, but I didn't want to put that on my list of goals because technically I've already done a cabled vest or I'm doing it right now. But yeah, it's been really fun being part of a test knit group and it was exciting picking the yarn. It's nice as well to try and keep a, a critical eye and to see if there's any mistakes or suggestions to do. It's been really enjoyable. And then I've been accepted into another test net to make the Primrose Slipover by Along Avec Anna. And that gave me an opportunity to buy her yarn, which is, it's so beautiful. It's, the colors are amazing and it was really hard to choose. There's definitely other color combos that I'd want to do. And something that I really like actually about her yarns is that the silk mohair not only is a perfect color match with its merino like equivalent but also the silk core of the mohair perfectly matches with that because you know sometimes in mohair the silk core is white and you can see that against your main color but it doesn't happen with that yarn so well done for that i think she also even sells buttons that are supposed to match her yarn colorways which is such a nice little detail if you really wanted to like match your cardigan perfectly but anyway, I'll pop a picture, if I haven't already, of that slipover. So yeah, I'll share more about that in my podcast episode when I work up more on that test knit. So because I've already met that goal, uh, I want to try and challenge myself. And it's it's so like small, but basically what I would really like is to test knit for Sari Nordland. I love all of her designs. I've been following her for ages. I'm actually just doing... A design of hers for the first time right now it's the loom sweater and the pattern is written like amazingly it's so beautiful and simple and elegant and she's got lots of nice cable jumper patterns and she also got some lace like she, is there anything she can do and she post test calls in her Ravelry group so and I think she also uses quite a variety of test knitters. She doesn't always go back to the same people. So I really think I do have a chance. And she's like such a big designer. I feel like for my pride, it would just feel good to be accepted in one of her test knits. So I'm going to keep an eye out. I'm only trying to apply for test knits that I really want to do because I don't want to get sucked in and doing projects I don't want to do just for the hype of it being a test knit. So I'll not apply to all of her tests or calls, but I'll apply for the ones that I want the finished object of. And yeah, I'll keep you updated on that as well. Hopefully I get it, but if I don't, then that's fine. I've already met goal number eight, which was to do a test knit. Then number nine is kind of a, a knitting intention as opposed to a goal, and it's to knit more socially. And I guess I've already done that in a couple of ways. First of all, I've made this YouTube channel, which was the point was to try and basically not just do knitting in my room alone, but to uh, talk about it with people, make some friends, uh, get some comments from people, like a bit of back and forth, get people's like ideas and inspiration. So I think that's been really enjoyable and fulfilling to have this YouTube channel to share the hobby socially. Then the other thing is that through that on Instagram, I've met a couple of people, um, that knit and I've met up with them in person so that's been really really nice to like just go to a coffee shop and knit it's been such a surreal experience because I, I had never done that before and I, I love it so much it made me more confident as well to bring my knitting out in public places I don't know some people can be weird about it and I was definitely a bit scared at first then I've also signed up for a knit night it's a virtual one uh, it's hosted by Madeline from Knit One Pearl One on Instagram and Sophie from 
um, forest and dot. Ooh, the sun is getting dangerously close, but I'm almost done anyway. So Sophie from Forest and Dot, and they put a call on their Instagram about like organizing this thing that would be held monthly for six months initially, and then maybe more, and you just have to sign up. And I did that, and it's been so great. We just had our second knit night last night, and it's just amazing. There's not like too many people, so it feels nice, because sometimes on Zoom, is if there's like 20 people, no one really knows when it's their turn to speak, but here it was like around 10 people both times, I think. So it was just like nice and felt like a nice small group. And we also have a Discord server where we can speak to each other between the knit nights. And it's it, it's great. I always look forward to having that knit night. But my only thing is that I wish it was more often. I think weekly might be a bit too much, but maybe every other week would be fun. So there's, I think there's a knit night organized in my little town just outside of Edinburgh. But I'm just too nervous for now to go. Um, I wish I had someone to bring with me. I think that would make it like easier. But I might at some point dip my toes and go to one. There's nothing to lose, I guess. But as you can see, I'm still not ready. And then there's another knit night actually that's held in Edinburgh, which I could go to but it's a bit of a hassle to get to. It's like literally on the other side of Edinburgh than the one I'm close to. So I'd have to take the train and possibly a bus afterwards or walk for like 30 minutes, which I wouldn't mind doing to go there, but then to come back, that would be annoying. Although my boyfriend is taking driving lessons and I think he's gonna be able to drive like this summer. So maybe I could convince him like when that time comes to like drop me off and take me back. That would be nice. Uh, and then also because I'm nervous to go anyway. So yeah, the virtual knit night has been a resounding success, but going to an in-person knit night, I still have to build up the confidence to do that, but I'm sure it would be great fun if I did it. And sometimes I'm, they have events like where you can swap some yarn and things like that. So it seems like it would be a really good opportunity as well to make more knitty friends. And another event, and another thing that I want to do to knit more socially is to go to a yarn festival or yarn event. And again, there's a date in the calendar for that. At the end of March, I'm going to go to the Perth Wool Showcase Festival. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a lovely event that is more focused on fibers and yarn as opposed to like hand dyers and pattern designers. So it'll be very interesting to learn about local fibers and breeds and processes and meet some of those smaller businesses. I think I'll, I'll go there with an open mind and just curiosity and try and soak up as much information as I can. I'll go with a little budget and I'm sure I'll bring some souvenirs, but I don't think it would be as dangerous for my wallet as a real festival like Unravel would be. Um, I'm getting FOMO though. I wish I could go to Unravel, which is a festival in the south of England happening next week but it's, it's so far, it's way too far, I can't go. And also it was, seems like it seems like a really overwhelming big event. I think I'd feel a bit lost. But then the Perth festival that I'm going to next month, they have another version of that festival in autumn uh, and I missed it this September, but I'm gonna go next September for sure. And that one will have a bit more local hand dyers like Zakami or Nervous Fiber, Dystopic Fiber, just a lot of people I've already mentioned before they're going to be there. So yeah, I think that'll be very exciting to go there. I'll make sure to maybe record a couple of things while I'm there, but I'm not sure yet because I don't know how I feel about filming things in public. This is a different deal than just me filming in my room. But I think it could be interesting, especially for my viewers that are not from the UK, to see what a UK yarn festival is because I'm sure it might not be comparable to US yarn festivals. Okay, and then goal number 10 is to find my perfect vanilla sock recipe. I feel like I've found the perfect sock recipe for my boyfriend now because the last ones I made him are just like perfect. So I found the right stitch counts for him, but I want to do the same for me so I can use my fancy hand dyed yarn without any fear of it not fitting me the way I want to. So I think I need to experiment a little bit more with different types of wool and fibers. For example, I know that I don't actually love superwash, especially for socks. Like I just find them too stretchy, too bouncy and not like strong and stable enough. I'd rather that they were more 
um, like there was more hold to them. I like Blueface Lester BFL for that. And I want to experiment with different heels because I've always been doing the heel slap and gusset and I love the way it works and it works up and fits, but I think maybe I, I might be missing out. I know some people have mentioned that there's like books or resources or videos or patterns that give you specific instructions on how to adjust your heels more tailored to your own personal foot size, which might be helpful because I've just been doing what the pattern tells me, but foots are coming in all different sizes and shapes and sometimes like a foot length is not directly correlated to like your heel depth or whatever. So I want to learn more about heels and then I definitely want to finally settle on a good needle size and stitch count for my socks. I think so far the two millimeter needles are showing to be my favorite needle size and I want to see if I'm happy with a 64 stitch count which I usually do or if I'm happy to go even lower than that like 56. So I'll be talking about that in the podcast anyway as always as I experiment. I think what I want to do is to maybe knit up nine pairs of socks this year. I think I've already done one or two so I think that's reasonable. I'm not gonna say like one a month because you never know what happens in a month and I don't want to like miss a month and feel like I've got to catch up in the next one. So let's say that I'm gonna knit nine pairs of socks. That would be quite fun. Definitely have a Christmas like colorway one to do in December so that that's sorted. And I usually use the 52 weeks of sock book to to pick a pattern. Like there's so many of them that I've already done and so many that I want to do. Right now I'm doing the Erika socks and I'm using Filipina Arueta. Actually, I'll, I'll show you. This is a ooh, lace pattern. So you've got that nice like leaf motif. This is quite a nice like marzipan beige color with nice stitch definition and obviously when it blocks out the lace will open up. So I've really been enjoying that and those those again are on 2mm. I had started on 225 and I had to frog because it was too loose for my liking. But yeah, I feel like every sock that I make now I'm definitely learning something from it. Either something that worked or something that didn't work. So every sock, even though none of them are perfect or my absolute favorite, they all brought me one step closer to getting to that perfect sock. And I can't wait to start using my fancy hand-dyed yarn. Like, I've got those kinds on my table that have been there since the start of the podcast. They are going to be used, I swear. I've got, like, three over there, but I've got one more in the shelf. And maybe some of them can even go together, or, like, as an accent color, or maybe in, in some color work as well. Like, you know, if you're using a hand-dyed as, like, your base, and then you have, like, the motif in a solid color that can be really nice. Charlotte Stone, I've got her book, The Charming Color Work Socks. She's got tons of patterns either in that book or also just like self-published on Ravelry and she has a lot of inspiration for socks that use hand dyed yarn as a color and then commercial yarns as accent colors so definitely wanting to do that with some of my hand dyed yarn. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too long or too boring. I hope that it was maybe relatable for some of them and that you maybe got some inspiration to set yourself some goals or challenges. I think they're realistic. I think all of them are realistic, but the question is, can I do all of them? And I'm definitely not going to be too hard on myself if I can't. I'm just personally the kind of person that thrives when there's like deadlines or like goals or targets to meet, it doesn't overwhelm me or make me not want to do them. Because I know some people like they've been very, very loose with their intentions and just kind of thinking, oh, I want to be more mindful when I knit this year, which it's great if that works for them, but it definitely wouldn't work on me because I'd, I'd lose sight. I need something that is tickable in a list. <laughs> So I think it'll be really fun next year to come back, look at this video and then like feedback. I think I'll definitely make a video where I go through all those 10 ones, one by one and talk about whether it was a success or not and then set the goals for next year. So let me know if you have any goals or intentions and how you came up with them. Was it just random? Was it inspired by other people? Was it inspired by previous goals? I'd be really curious to see so that I know how to make my goals for next year because I feel like if I meet all of these then like what else is there to do but I'm sure I'll come up with ideas 
But anyway, it was lovely getting to speak to you all again today. I love making these videos and I'm so happy that you guys seem to love them too. I've been getting like really good feedback and really helpful feedback as well sometimes for like practical tips. So if you have any thoughts about the podcast or the videos, like let me know and I'm really open to like any constructive criticism. But yeah, uh, happy knitting and I hope that you're well wherever you are. Bye!